Good evening. Good evening. Minister Pupatello, Treasurer Morocco, honored guests and friends, welcome to tonight's reception and again, happy International Women's Day. I am pleased to present to you uh, Treasurer Morocco, who is the head of the Law Society of Upper Canada, and he will introduce uh, Minister Pupatello. Good evening, Good evening, everyone, and it's a pleasure to welcome you all uh, to the Law Society. I want to thank, first of all, all of our partners for helping us to organize uh, today's events. It, it's a very much a, a priority for us at the Society uh, to participate in issues and, uh, of importance in the community, and certainly the issues that were raised today uh, in the panel discussion are issues that are very important for our society and, and it, we're pleased to be able to do our little bit to contribute. I know that when I was a, a prosecutor it was a great source of frustration to me um, the, way these, uh, where, the way criminal cases involving uh, domestic violence mostly were, were treated um, in the criminal process. Um, even though that was some time ago, one knew uh, instinctively that that wasn't right. And many of you here are to be commended for the efforts that have been made to improve the way those matters are dealt with today. But these issues, the issues surrounding violence uh, and, and violence as it's applied against women, these issues will be with us for a long, long time. This is a journey that is carried out step by step. And today is just one small step in that journey, and we're pleased to be part of it. I want to thank our partners, the Barbara Schliefer Clinic, the Women's Law Association of Ontario, the Feminist Legal Analysis Section of the Ontario Bar Association, and the Women's Future Fund. On uh, International Women's Day, I would also like to recognize and commend the work of the Ontario government in dealing with domestic violence. The government's action plan on domestic violence shares our goals, shares the Law Society's goals and commitment to address the issues of inequality and the issues of the effect of violence, not only on women but at all people in our society. At this time, I would like to introduce our honored guests this evening the Honorable, Honorable Sandra Pupatello, Ontario's Minister of Community and Social Services and the Minister responsible for women's issues. As I said earlier, we're very pleased to be supportive of the government's agenda in this area and that's due in no small credit to the Honorable Sandra Pupatello. Minister. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for the, uh, for the welcome here to be here at your reception. I, uh, I only regret that I couldn't sit through your afternoon because I understand that the day you had today was, it wasn't just informative, but it was uplifting as it was put to me, uh, and it was worthwhile for everyone who was there. What I know also about the justice sector and what I just love to see is this mix of the community with the justice sector, with the courts, with people who are the garters of the court. Uh, we need to have that kind of interaction, in particular when we're talking about women. But let me start by saying Happy Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. I wish to all of you, to the Treasurer, thank you so much for hosting this reception. It's very good to be here today. Um, I wish every day was International Women's Day, and it is my goal in my portfolio as Women's Issues Minister to make everybody think it's Women's Day every day. <laughs> so, but we're going to get there. <laughs> But I, I also have the, the, the real honor that Dalton McGinty gave me in two portfolios, community and social services and women's issues. And it is an interesting mix because they are inexorably entwined every day of my life. 
Everything that we do in one ministry has a serious effect on the other for some really good reasons. My ministry of Comsoc, we've gone back to the old, uh, old word Comsoc for my ministry, uh, and some of the staff said that was the best thing we ever did actually is go back to just calling it Comsoc because everyone was calling it Comsoc no matter what the government kept changing the name to. But, um, but I deal with the most vulnerable people in Ontario in that ministry. So then I go walking over to get the files on women's issues for the day and guess what? They are the same issues. We're dealing with the same people. And what we have to understand as a government, I, I hope I can report to you a year in that we are getting it, that we are beginning to move forward, that at the end I've got to say we're further ahead today than we were yesterday, and that's my goal. And sometimes we're moving slower than I'd like to see as a government. But we have to push ourselves because we have forces politically that would have us step backwards, and we have some forces that want us to move ahead a mile at a time. In the middle somewhere is where we are, and we, we constantly try to move forward. I just <coughs> it's very dry in these old buildings. Excuse me just for a moment. But I wanted to just impart one message tonight. Well, I guess two, because the first was International Women's Day. We all have to recognize it and respect it and talk about it. The second is about what we are doing as an Ontario government and how we can reach out to our communities to help us do our job better. We did this past December launch our domestic violence action plan. There's no plan that's going to be perfect. In my opinion, it's the first time a government actually had a plan. That's step one. Step two is get the plan done and then see how much more we can add to this plan. Because what we did do was lay out in times of very difficult fiscal times, $66 million to move us forward. It is a significant amount for this area. We focused on four specific areas, some of which is brand new that I know people are saying, it's about time. And the biggest area for it's about time is about public education. And some people will have referenced it all day today. <coughs> Pardon me. And that is breaking the code, breaking that cycle amongst how our very young people think about equality in relationships, genders, how they see themselves and how they see each other. How does a boy see themselves versus how does a girl see themselves? And we're doing the right kind of research so that we can develop the right kind of public ed campaign to be able to say to the public, yes, we're spending your money, but we're going to show you a difference. We are going to change attitudes. And we're beginning that campaign with an 8 to 14-year-old focus to say, it's not okay to say you run like a girl. Those are the kinds of things that you don't even realize that parents say to their kids often. And then we're going to focus a campaign on the people who influence that young generation, like coaches, like parents. We too need to know how our language influences people and starts that kind of psyche that is extremely difficult to break. So we know public education is a significant part of our plan and it is the largest campaign that we have ever seen in this province and it will be well done. We are extending significant tentacles now into our communities to do it well. We are talking about community supports because what we recognize is that when people do come forward finally to say I've had enough, I cannot take this abuse, I have to get out, or their friends and colleagues and neighbours have finally convinced them they have to leave, we have to have supports in place to reach to them and help them and get them back on their feet. That stems all kinds of areas, not just the shelter. You know, it astounds me to learn that 13% of all women who suffer abuse actually end up in a shelter. And so that tells us, the government, what are we doing about that? What are we doing about the majority of women who never come through the shelter door? At least when they come in that front door, you have an opportunity. You can ply them with all the excellent programming and people that you have working in the shelter system. What about those that don't come in? What are we doing to reach out into the community, to get information, to get help to the ones who will never go through that door? And I will tell you that a shelter in 1970 is not the same organization today, and the women are different also. We've also learned that we have to focus on significant target areas. We do have to focus on our Native women. It is astounding the incidence of abuse amongst our Native women population. We have to be sure that we are targeting because we had better target our high-risk women group because I'm telling you the abuse is there. 
We have to target our Francophone women. We just had an announcement last week, and it's going to continue through this entire plan. Madeleine Mayer, our Mr. Responsible for Francophone Affairs, we've got a plier from the ceiling most of the time because she is so ecstatic that for the first time, we are bringing some equity to our funding for our French language folk so they can actually go and access services in their language. And it's not just for some old Francophone community. Many of our new immigrant women are landing here French-speaking, right in the city of Toronto. And we've got to recognize that we've got to have these services available here as well. A significant part of our plan is bringing back that French language service to the sector. Another big area, of course, is training. And everyone talks about it. And you know, across Ontario, for the last year and a half or more, I have traveled to see excellent programming around training of frontline people in this business that deal with women and children who've experienced abuse. I've seen great stuff out there. What we don't have in Ontario is a systematic purchase of best practice from one and bring it right across the province. We can't afford to reinvent the wheel. We've got to find a way to talk to each other and get everybody up to that highest standard. And that is our job. To that end, we are doing our part in bringing together people and conferences. And we, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> We acknowledge the work of many groups who are doing that same kind of conference. This morning I was at one with the Crown Attorneys where they talk about all those best things that they can do to make the court system better uh, for women of domestic violence. <clears throat> it's not just me, is it? Look this. Uh. <laughs> I should have had that wine when I got in the door. But, I <laughs> but anyway, so training is significant. And it's a big part of our plan for domestic violence in all of the significant areas. Emergency workers, paramedics who are the first ones on the scene. Who would think that in this day and age, the way our ambulance services work, the firefighters are often the first ones at the front door confronted with this, uh, a domestic abuse issue. And then we have nurses. Our Ministry of Health is spending significant amount of dollars helping us train emergency room doctors, nurses, to do the right things. The last time I read the very last death review report for Ontario that actually did the study of the women who died at the hands of their abuser, do you know that every single one of them had been to see a family physician within six months of their death? Most of the time when we have abuse within a family, it is repetitive, it is repeated before it ultimately ends up in death. That tells me that our frontline people have an opportunity to get in there and be wise and give the kind of advice and the kind of influence that would get women the help that they need. We've got to participate in that. Another significant area I don't need to tell this group about is the justice sector. We know that there is much more work to be done. Today you may have talked about some of the new things that are happening, the tests that our government is going through for risk assessment, the bail hearing issues, <coughs> excuse me, mm. the bail hearing issues. There are a number of areas that we know we need to improve on and we need more and more help to learn what those things are. One of the highlights I hope is that where the federal government can be involved we want to drain them into this as well because we know there are issues around the criminal code, uh, reverse onus on bail, those kinds of issues. Uh, for the first time, we in Ontario, Michael Bryant and I, are hosting a joint federal, provincial, territorial meeting, the justice ministers of the nation and the women's issues ministers of the nation right here. And we are putting all of it on the table because us collectively, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> if I were to tell you some of the details about the FPTs, they call them, um, it was a feat. But we went forward from Ontario to our first meeting in St. John last year and said, here are our issues. We cannot come from across the country and talk about what they all are unless we're prepared a year from now to come back and tell you what we did about it. And that's really our purpose. And Michael Bryan has been tremendous to work with as a partner in this area. He and Kotler, Frula and I, who's my colleague, Lisa Frula, the minister uh, resp responsible at the federal issue for women's issues, the four of us are planning this as we speak so that we can put those items on the table so that we collectively can come back with some solutions. 
for Ontario and for the nation. We are trying to do our part. What I hope is that we can match the kind of commitment that I have found in the field from people who work in our communities, the people who work in our courts. People don't just fall into this line of work. They come there because it is meaningful to them and because they know every day they make a difference with their work. It's never a job when you're working in the sector. It truly has to be described as a vocation. And I hope that by the time I am through with our first term of government that I can match the same commitment that you have brought to this area and that we can do just as good a job as I know that you do every day. Thanks so much for having me here tonight and I applaud you. Thank you. My name's uh, <clears throat> Malcolm Hines, and I'd like to thank the Minister for her remarks tonight. Uh, Minister, I can assure you here at the Law Society that, from my perspective, every day is indeed International Women's Day, in that uh, my senior executive of nine is made up of seven women. So uh, uh, I certainly have some personal experience around that. You've had the occasion tonight to listen to the Minister speak, and uh, I think you'll agree with me uh, that listening to her speak and I've had the opportunity to meet with her a number of times during the currency of her mandate and I found that her candor and insight for the challenges facing the ministry are really refreshing. When you combine that uh, candor and insight with the obvious enthusiasm and energy she brings to the portfolio I think you would agree with me that she's an excellent excellent ambassador and representative for women in both both ministries that she that she represents. Minister, we thank you for your dedication, your words of encouragement and leadership, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much for coming tonight. So, please enjoy the reception, and happy International Women's Day to all of you. Thank you for coming.